All right, so we got why Warhammer Fantasy is better than 40K. Now, I was actually recommending this video. Um, let's get right into it. What is Warhammer Fantasy, by the way? Can somebody explain to me in the comments down below? Let's go do it. Been a while since I've done a bit of a rambling opinion piece, and I figured for this one, I'd just flop my shmee onto the table for all to see and judge. Flop As you is can what? probably guess from the title, I think Warhammer Fantasy is a better setting than Warhammer 40K. I much prefer it to 40K for a whole variety of reasons. Is this Warhammer I'll Fantasy? All those reasons a little more low key of a video while the Malekith one is waiting to come out and the Tao Do or Don't is in the works. Probably shouldn't have to tell you this, but this is my opinion, not the word of Christ Almighty himself. So if I say <laughs> something here you disagree with, that's okay. Opinions are nice like that. There's rarely a single correct one this True. is warhammer hey, hey hey and as me as a gaming reaction channel i like opinions too hey i like this guy yo youtube channel not a congressional hearing but i'll throw some actual reasons your way too just to pretend i can analyze these settings at a level approaching rational thought so sit back and enjoy the background total war footage with occasional pictures while i lay my smooth brains thought processes out for you okay but before i go on look at this really quickly one i'd be terribly grateful if you did what it says oh but also i want to give a massive thanks to barry waltz for throwing this together for me oh, i made a silly yeah. poorly edited Subscribe. meme when he overtook me in subs he gives me something i can use for the rest of my youtube career what a class act that Barry. Oh, I don't know nice. how to get rid of the black fire or the green screen so it's going to stay like this and add to the general trashy feel of my channel. Not that it's trashy itself, it's just me handling anything someone gives me as trashy, you see. Anyways, I don't know what I'm doing. Time to talk about why I think fantasy is better. First all right, of all, um, this is a reason that can't really be debated unlike some of the others because it's just personal taste. I prefer fantasy to sci-fi. I like dragons and wizards more than I like spaceship fights and planetary bombardment. Don't get me wrong, sci-fi is still amazing and I love it. I mean, I've got a halo tattoo among other things. I gotta love sci-fi a bit, but I just prefer fantasy to it. That being said, there are still a few ways within the context of okay. Warhammer that gives fantasy an edge over 40k in this department. Something I read online that I'm a big fan of quoting is that 40k is a fantasy setting cosplaying as science fiction. I mean, there's demons and hyperspace travel involves going through hell. I hope I'm not breaking anyone's oh, mind war, by right? saying 40k isn't exactly hard science fiction. But it's still somewhat sci-fi, so this means it has to justify things a bit more. Okay, so he's more into the... I, I can... I can. Listen, I'm about to break this down like chemistry class. So basically, he's more into the he's more into like the into like the fantasy world of like like he said before like dragons and you know uh, uh witches and all types of you know uh, uh uh all types of you know catastrophes and stuff like that he's more into that okay cool and then like you know obviously uh warhammer 40k that's like space and stuff like that okay you know what okay because i'm gonna be honest with you i don't i don't even know what warhammer fantasy is again if somebody can explain down in the comment section down below that would be absolutely amazing but i was like bro what the bro what the hell is warhammer fantasy what what is that more than fantasy does for example i thought that was a dlc powers. in 40k the chaos gods all have various things related to psychic powers and how souls work in the universe to explain how in a setting that's supposedly sci-fi there's evil gods and demons each of them came about at various points in history in response to events in the material world it's a similar situation with the old ones and their creations the eldar gods for instance might not be gods, but either manifestations of Eldar belief or the old ones taking on the role of gods to survive. Either way, okay. you get people like the Emperor taking on the argument that there yeah. are no gods in the setting, just things we don't understand that are evil and pretending <laughs> to be gods. There's more work being done to justify why the setting is the way it is. Psyker powers themselves also suffer from a similar effect. You see, when Araman blasts some poor bastard with lightning, he's not using magic. It's actually psychic powers emanating from a realm beyond human comprehension. Totally not magic. Look at all these reasons <laughs> we have listed for you that someone resurrecting with the power of someone else <laughs> called the God Emperor isn't magic. You know what the justification is for there being gods and magic in Warhammer Fantasy? It's a fucking fantasy setting. Of course there's wizards and evil gods. They're just part of the setting. Yeah. There's much less legwork needed to be done in order to make the setting work. Makes there's sense. also the advantage inherent in fantasy settings that people more or less know a lot about everything involved before they even get into the setting. For instance, True. high elves are going to be arrogant, aloof, and good at magic. Dwarfs like beer, live in mountains, and eat rocks. This makes the setting much makes easier sense, to yeah. jump right into because if you're getting into Warhammer Fantasy, you presume presumably know what an elf is. Sure, yeah. the specifics might trip you up a bit, like orcs are a bit different in Warhammer than anywhere else, but you can get a handle on the broad strokes before you even read yeah. into the lore. Meanwhile, okay. 40k that makes has sense. to explain pretty much everything. What's a Primarch? What's a Space Marine chapter? Why is everything heresy? Even if some of these <laughs> things have simple answers, they still need answers, whereas with fantasy, you can just jump right into it. Okay. The thing is, right, and I don't even mean, like, pause like that. My, my, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't really pause like that to begin with, but the thing is, right, some people like that, though. Some people love... Some people love to go into something just like this guy that's talking right here. Some people love to just go into something and just feel free and, and just not hear like the step one, step two, you know, YouTube tutorial about every single thing that they run into, which is true. Some people do like that free feeling. But at the same time, bro, some people love walking into a game and there's like 50 different things that they got to learn. Like some people love that, though. 
Yeah, learn. Like some people love, like you know, learning about stuff, learning about different uh, types of like factions and stuff like that. That's like whenever I hopped into Warhammer, bro. I didn't know anything. I'm like, bro, what the bro? What the hell is an ultramarine, bro? Bro, you mean the Indianapolis Colts, bro? Like, what, what, bro? What are we talking about? Like, I didn't know anything about Warhammer. But to be fair and to be honest with you, I do like that there's a lot of like lore and history behind Warhammer 40k because I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but like, I, I like it, bro. There's a lot of history behind it. Why not? You know, why not learn it? But again, like he said before, like in the in the Warhammer fantasy thing, you just jump into it and just like you know, just do whatever. And, and like everything's pretty much self-explanatory. You don't have to. It's not like a like a, a William Shakespeare novel behind every single. You know, this, this, it's not like a like a whole novel behind every single like things like description. If you get what I'm saying, so okay, I, I get what you're saying by that. Okay, this makes it a lot easier to get into Warhammer Fantasy than okay. 40k. For something a bit less meta, let's talk about the scale of the settings. Warhammer 40k is a gigantic blob of a science fiction universe. <laughs> I mean, look at this map. There's a whole lot of diddly in the 40k galaxy. Now let's yeah. go back down to Warhammer Fantasy. It's a single world that looks a whole lot like Earth, with a True. not Atlantis right in the not Atlantic. Thankfully, there's still a landmass roughly equivalent to Florida. So rest assured, there's certainly some lizard men and or dark elves in that area. Florida's just crazy. Salts. At first, you might go bigger is better, and in some ways, 40K's massive size does give it an advantage over fantasy. There's far more room for homebrews and large-scale adventures to take place in without upsetting the status quo, but that's very much a double-edged sword. There's plenty of downsides to it, and one is that the scale of 40K can keep individual achievements from meaning anything. Let's say some Chaos Lord blows up a planet. Okay? Cool, I guess. That's not bad. Inquisitors do that regularly. BL Tan regularly cleanses all life on a planet down to the bacteria on it. A character can conquer a system, and there'll be a hundred like him who've done equally as much, if not more. But going back to fantasy, it's a single planet. Destroying certain cities can mean a whole lot, even though it's just a single city. It gives a much better scale of threat than GW having to just keep upping the amount of planets someone conquers to mean anything. There will always be more planets in the Imperium. Just conquering one doesn't mean anything for a character. But if some guy in his band of chaos goobers take down a city at the edge of the Empire, that can mean something. Hey, on. bro, he's sorry. <laughs> hey, he sound like a hater, bro. Bro, bro, what did 40k do to you, bro? He's going crazy on 40. He's like, bro, like, bro, y'all really get, bro, y'all really getting emotional. Like, y'all, y'all about to start crying over a planet going away, like, for real, like that doesn't, bro. This is what he sound, bro. He sounds so like nonchalant and like he sound like he just don't care. I mean, bro, like I said before, you know, some people care, bro. Some people care. You know, that one planet, bro. That thing, like Planet Nemec from Dragon Ball, bro. That, listen, that planet hold a lot of weight, bro. What, what if they like that planet, bro? Well, what, if, what if it's just not one planet, bro? What if it's, what if it's a home set? Just this. this. <laughs> <laughs> to somebody, he talking about, bro. He said, "Bro, is this one planet, bro? Bro, the wizards, the wizards in Warhammer Fantasy, bro. They get rid of a planet like that, easy, bro. Bro, he <laughs> obviously like you know he likes you know Warhammer Fantasy more, so he's gonna he's gonna be more biased. Obviously, that's the whole point of the video, but it's funny on like how like nonchalant and uh, like, like how careless he sounds. It's funny." I like that. What the city was, you can get an actual sense of scale out of that. It's Another funny, it's advantage funny. of fantasy scale is that you can actually get a sense of threat based on where a battle or threat takes place. Space is very big. Realistically speaking, the chaos incursion taking place 30,000 light years away from Terra is no more of a threat than one taking place 3,000 light years away from it. But the writers of GW are going to make the second one seem worse because it's technically closer. Even though in both cases, the enemy is still a massive, massive amount of distance away from the throne world. It's space. You can't march an army across the galaxy, no slow attrition warfare across the land. It's just 3,000 is closer than 30,000, therefore that's a big deal, ignoring the fact that realistically speaking, those are both such massive distances with such massive amounts of planets and star systems in the way that they're almost equivalent. But now let's go look at a map of the Empire of Man. Let's say Chaos Raiders are on the coast of Nordland. Who gives a shit? You can probably see Norska from the coastline if the weather permits. Viking Raiders coming into pillage is like the first snowfall of the year. It's just part of life. You can tell based on its location that it's not a meaningful threat to the Empire if a Norskan raid goes into Nordland. But let's say the Chaos Raiders are now an Uber's right. The exact same amount of raiders with the Uber. exact same gear and the exact same amount of attention from the Chaos Gods. Without changing the number of invaders or their strength at all, you just scale the threat level up massively because now they aren't in bumfuck nowhere, they're in the capital province of the Empire <laughs> and a stone throw away from Altdorf, the capital city. You can infer so many more things about the threat than in 40k solely based on its location and distance from other locations. I mean, okay, One he has 
Second point, much on he has a scale point. Before moving on, is similar to my first point. With a few exceptions, a location being destroyed in 40k just doesn't mean anything due to how many more near identical versions of the location exist. Oh no, Forge World Hephaestus was destroyed. What will we do? Oh, there's another thousand of them. Sure, some worlds will matter more, but there will always be more worlds. There will always be enough Forge Worlds or Agri Worlds or whatever the hell worlds to keep the Imperium at the level of things are getting very bad, but we aren't quite crumbling yet. The only way to make a particular location important is for the writers to say it's important for one reason or another. This Forge World is important because it has a certain tech blueprint. This Agri World is important because it feeds a hundred other worlds. <laughs> and even knowing that, there will always be more planets to fill in the gap. Again, there are exceptions. Cadia blowing up was pretty yeah. consequential, to put it mildly. And either of the two passages between the Great Rift falling would certainly be bad news, to say the least. But for the most part, the Imperium can lose a hundred planets in a day, and it means nothing. Now go back to fantasy. Let's say a horde of beastmen raise a city. Pillars of literal shit erected up to mark the hunting grounds. The side of order has no more presence here. Victory for chaos. As small a change as that might be in the grand scale of things, it's infinitely more impactful in fantasy, because that's it. There's no replacement for that city sitting around the galaxy. There won't be a okay. lost one to find in some forgotten corner okay okay <laughs> okay okay i can kind of get what he's saying he's basically saying that if you destroy a world in 40k then it's gg i mean well it's not gg it's well like you know boohoo the world is dead you know womp womp there's like 999 other of those planets okay and then you go over to you know in, in fantasy where literally the map is like a the map is literally like like the world that we live on where it's like you know if, if this you know if this town fight this town or whatever and one town loses it and it gets absolutely wiped or whatever then it's a tragedy because that town can never come back i understand that but at the end of the day i feel like and listen i'm a warhammer new booty i'm, I'm a newbie okay so don't you know don't kill me but i think it's you can't compare it it's two different like settings you know because now you're you're talking about you're talking about space but at the same time you're talking about the world basically because if you look at the map on fantasy is it literally looks like like the globe it looks like the earth it looks like north america south america africa it, it legit has like the layout of earth not you know to the t or anything like that but if you look at the map you know like he showed like a few moments ago it looks like the earth so it's two different things you know that's just like that's just like me saying um okay that's just like me saying like aliens from this planet i'm I'm talking about in real life let's say aliens from this planet took down uh a moon of saturn you get what i'm saying and, and, and so to be honest with you that would be like crazy because i'm like dang like aliens really took that moon down from saturn like at, like even though saturn got like 22 moons they took down one moon da, 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 da. like that's crazy but like you know saturn they got 20 moons left it's okay but then let's say, God forbid, you know, let, let me make a prayer real quick. God forbid, let's say that that uh, that one country on Earth nukes another country. Let's just say that. Just, just I'm, I'm not, listen, I hope it doesn't happen in real life because I wish none of that on nobody. But let's just say that, though. For example, let's say one country nukes another country. That's horrible. That's horrible. I get what he's saying. The extremes is, 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 is different. But at the same time, though, you can't compare it. Yes, you, I mean, you can, but you can't because the destruction of a moon for Saturn, like, it, it's just a, you know, it's a, it's a moon for Saturn. Like, nobody lives on it. It's a rock. I mean, whatever. But then if you come to Earth and, you know, and, and a country nukes another country, that's something. You can't really compare that. You can't. It, it, it's, it's kind of like, you can't really compare that. But maybe that's just me. Maybe that was like a horrible, like, you know, uh, you know, comparison or whatever. But I don't know. Again, what am I? I'm just a Warhammer new booty. Reality. That city's gone, and without a major effort, it won't ever be replaced or come back. Strategic locations and hey, resources did I cook so on my analogy or what? another dozen essentially identical versions of them located across the galaxy. A critical fortress world can be destroyed, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It's space. You can go around it. But you can't go around Helmgard. Unless you're the Skaven, then you just go under it. To stop rambling on about scale, the characters in Warhammer Fantasy just feel more relatable and appreciable as people. Part of that is okay, I don't know about the characters. focus on Marines. I'm not a super soldier in the year 40,000. I don't fight massive battles on the daily. I admit this might just be a me thing, but I find it hard to relate to the demigod son of the emperor feeling a bit snubbed by his divine daddy. Also, this whole video was about a me thing anyways, but I digress. Even ignoring that, however, the people in 40k almost seem like empty shelves. I'm struggling to explain exactly what I mean, so how about I try and pull a valid example? Carl Franz, yeah, I'm sure you could predict that was my example, is the emperor of the empire of man, prince and emperor of Reichland, wielder of Galmaraz, and yes, I am going to introduce him with that full set of titles every time I bring him up for the first
first time in a video. He's a noble warrior and great statesman, but by his own admission in Total Warhammer, he does some dark stuff to keep the Empire safe. A witch hunter can order a town burned to the ground because he thinks a chaos worshiper or vampire might have power there, and he does it with Carl's stamp of approval. But he does this because he cares for his country, his people. This is just the only way he can see the Empire surviving another day. He's okay. motivated by the goodness and patriotism in his heart, even though the deeds he approves of are horrendous. Even the evil characters get a lot of depth like this, with some exceptions. Nagash, okay. Sigal, all of the Skaven ever. Vlad wants power and to rule the Empire, but he gives at least a bit of a damn about the average human in the world at a level beyond walking, talking, blood juice box. Characters in 40k okay. meanwhile often just seem to do the things they do because it's expected of them, and relatedly are massive assholes because otherwise the setting wouldn't suck. Why do space marines fight chaos? Well, there's so many chapters that it varies, but a lot of the time I get the impression the reason is because that's what they're supposed to do. Do they massacre civilians even though they hate it because they just think they need to? No, not really. They just do that because that's what marines do. They don't give a damn about humanity or even fellow space <laughs> marines. They just fight because they need to fight. There's no mo Okay. All right, hold up. All right, hold up. Let me let me break this down. Let me break this down. All right, hold up. Again, I am a Warhammer new booty, but I, listen, it, correct me if I'm wrong, by the way. Don't just sit here and agree with me, all right? But there's some, there's some like, you know, factions or fractions that there's some that care about their humans, right? Bro, the Salamanders, bro. My favorite, uh, my favorite fraction. They care about uh, uh, um, their people, right? Or no, do they? Do they? I think so. Well, yeah, they're nice, right? They they hug them and stuff, right? They see, 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 hey, 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 see. Wait, wait, wait. Mine, my fraction, the Salamanders. See, they care. Hey, he's not talking about the Salamanders. Those are my favorite, you know, fraction or faction or group, whatever you want. I'm gonna call them a group. I don't care what you say. But yeah, bro, my group, they care. Everybody else, man, you know, the little war demons. Uh, Yo, yo, the Space Marines, the Ultramarines, the, my bad, the Indianapolis Colts. Bro, they care about their humans too, right? Right? They're not all bad. Some of them are bad though, bro. Ooh, so, but here's the thing though. You know what? You know what? I can't lie to you. He kind of, he does have a point. That's that a lot of space marine like, you know, um, factions or whatever. They do go crazy on their like humans and stuff like that just to do it. Some some do it. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some just do it just to do it. And there are some bro that just come out the womb and like they're like they got to They put the work like they're put to work as a kid. And then, bro, there's a faction, bro, bro, bro. bro. Here's what I learned. There's a faction or fraction or, 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 or whatever, bro. There's a faction, bro. As soon as they come out the womb, they're like immediately like put to pain, and so they all they feel is pain and stuff like that. And and as soon as they deal, and as soon as they um and as soon as they 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 uh feel good or whatever, they get more pain dumped on top of them. And bro, and so they they, they start like destroying people and stuff like that. I can't lie to you, I feel bad for them, bro. The people who feel pain all the time, oh man, my heart, man, man, I fell down to my knees when I knock down. Motivation beyond fighting. That's it. A I lot of space marine them. chapters give evil deeds not because it's a necessity, but because they're the dickhead chapter, and the dickhead chapter has to be dickheads. They commit evil deeds just because that's their role in life, not because they think this is the only option and they hate every minute of it. And yes, I'm aware they're brainwashed child soldiers, but my viewpoint on that is just because there's a reason for something being boring doesn't make it not boring. It's like when a video game character is made to be annoying on purpose. Good job, you succeeded. I still hate them. A lot of 40k <laughs> characters also fit templates. This man is a salamander. He's kind to the common man and likes fire. This is an Eldar. She's aloof and mystical and arrogant as all hell, only really caring about herself and other Eldar. There are exceptions, don't get me wrong, Caiaphas Kane and the Gaunt books especially break the mold of their factions. But reading about 40k characters a lot of the time, it seems like they take the standard Hey, I like him. I like him. He mentioned my he mentioned the Salamanders. Hey, I knew he was real to begin with. See, this is what you see, this is see the guy that's talking, even though he's a hater, eh. He's my guy, bro. I told you, bro. Bro, he mentioned the Salamanders, bro. I told y'all, bro. See, I know what I'm talking about. I got the whole game plan up in here. I told you. For a I told you. Add a quirk or two. Fantasy still has templates for characters. I'm not gonna pretend it doesn't. I'm not gonna show that much favoritism. This isn't Halo. I'm talking about. But let's look at a few of the high elf characters. There's Teclas, a crippled mage who does his best to keep the realms of man and elf safe, not just his own. There's Altharia and the Grim, the living epitome of a brick wall who cares about nothing but defending his homeland and ensuring that Yvres never falls to orcs like it once nearly 
actually did. There's oh, a wow. Nar, who's basically just a spirit of vengeance against Dark Elves that never got around to dying because he's so damn focused on killing more Dark Elves, he just doesn't age. None of them are anything like each other. And that's ignoring Finnobar, Tyrion, Kaelidor, Dragon Tamer, and all sorts of minor characters. There are two minor High Elf characters in a Gotrick and Felix book that, to my knowledge, never appear in another book, and each of them were completely distinct from anyone else. In fantasy, not only are the characters more relatable, but they don't feel nearly as reliant on templates. Templates still exist, but it feels like they don't to anywhere near the same extent. Something else about fantasy I personally find appealing is that its history is fairly concise and laid out. Now, I'm not that much of a fool. I know that 40k's vibe of history and culture being lost and forgotten is a major part of the setting, especially the Imperium. And the setting as a whole would certainly be lesser if that wasn't the case. But I'm still a silly guy who majored in history. I like seeing the entire chain of events leading into one another. Reading oh, about so the you do like history. revolutions that changed the world. And with fantasy, you get exactly that. There's still some mystery, like precisely what the old ones were doing beyond preparing for chaos or how exactly the scape came about, given that there's like five different accounts from the Doom of Kavzar to the Sea God cursing some sailors. But everything from Sigmar's rise to the War of the Beard to Nagash are all fairly well accounted for. You can read exactly why elves and dwarves hate each other, just how Malekith's rise to power went down. There's little theory crafting or anything like it involved. That too has its downsides in that there's much less interesting debates and theories to discuss, but like I said earlier, this is a matter of taste. And also, like I said earlier, just because there's a reason something is the way that it is doesn't mean I have to like it. Sue me. And finally, I just think <laughs> fantasy has better games. I know, a very weak point, but this whole video is subjective, so why don't I end on something that's 110% subjective? As opposed to the rest of this video just being 100% subjective. The Total War Warhammer and Vermintide games absolutely knock it out of the park. By quantity, I think 40k has more good games, and it has some absolute bangers, don't get me wrong. I mean, anyone who's a fan of RTS games that doesn't think Dawn of War is amazing either hasn't played it or is lying to you. Space Marine is a fun little snacky third-person shooter, and Mechanicus, I'm sure, needs no introduction. But out of the like enjoyment I've gotten too? out of the games, Fantasy has it won by a long shot. A lot of people started learning new hobbies and skills in 2020 when we're all stuck at home, from cooking to even painting miniatures, more related to the hobby. True. I woke up, booted up Steam, and played Total Warhammer 2 for eight hours. Summer 2020 oh, wow. was the summer of Total Warhammer for me. And I think I'm wrapped up here. That's all my major reasons for why I think Fantasy is better than 40k. Do keep Houses. in mind I've been specifically referring to Warhammer Fantasy and not Age of Sigmar, because some of the things I said about the scale of the Age of who? apply just as well to AOS as they do to 40k. And with that, I think I'm also out of straw man arguments I can think of to defend myself with. Either way, do let me know in the comments why whatever Warhammer setting you like the most is your favorite. I'm happy to read them because this is all about personal enjoyment and I love to hear what makes people interested in True. the setting they chose to champion. Malekith is coming out soon. This should be going up before that's out. Don't tell anyone I told you this one, but me and some other fellows have some Necron stuff coming out soon. More on that to come. Shout out again to Barry Waltz for gifting me that wonderful little subscribe notification. He's a real pal. Go sub to Bergingo Waltathan. Thank you, of course, to my wonderful channel members. Oh, snap. The Galma Raz to my hey, man. Oh, snap. Shout out to all the members man all right listen this is my first time ever reacting to this guy's channel um he sounds like he sounds like a suave guy um uh, now to be honest with you um i know nothing again i know nothing about warhammer uh fantasy never played any of the games i'm just now getting into warhammer okay um but i definitely do i mean listen i am a little biased right because i never even you know i never even dipped my toe into warhammer fantasy so you already know i'm, I'm gonna say that warhammer 40k is way better um but that's just me being biased and stupid because, like, you know, like, I haven't even tried out Warhammer Fantasy. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, obviously, you know, the guy, he got his own opinion stuff like that. I'm not going to sit here and rage quit. I'm not going to sit here and, like, you know, and uh, and blow up my entire city, you know, because he said that Warhammer Fantasy is better than, you know, Warhammer 40K. That's not, like, I mean, listen, I, I don't think you guys should get mad either. Even though, bro, the what? listen, the way, like, how, like, <laughs> I was laughing so much because, like, on how nonchalant he sound while talking. That's the funniest thing about, like, his video. The way he was talking, bro, he was like, yeah, because, you know, to be honest with you, I really just don't care. You know, my game, like, my, my series is way better. Like, this game is trash. If you really care about it, uh, I look forward to seeing your comment. But to be honest with you, I really don't care. Like, the way he was talking was so nonchalant. But at this, like, you could tell, bro, first of all, he was standing on business to begin with. He stood on business, and uh, he, stood, he stood by his decisions. Uh, you know what? Everybody, you know, if, if you can stand by your decision and not go with everybody else, you know, hey, you know, that's a good thing. I mean, especially like, you know, as a man, whatever, that that's really a good thing. But other than that, man, um, I definitely enjoy Warhammer 40k way more than fantasy. Um, and like I said before, haven't played fantasy ever again. But um, to be honest with you, I kind of did like this video. Uh, should I dive into Warhammer uh, Warzone? I said Warzone. Ooh, listen, don't clap me up. So I dive into more into uh, Warhammer <laughs> for. <laughs> Warhammer uh fantasy should I dive into it yay or nay um yes I yo I got part two of Warhammer 
um, a, a, a 40k fractions explained by Bricky. I got that coming through today as well. I know a lot of you guys enjoyed part one. You guys know I had to get part two ready for you guys coming later today. Um, I also have like a war zone. Uh, bro, I keep saying war zone, bro. What's the, listen? Don't kill me, L bro. Courage and honor, but don't don't take my head off. Um, I got a Warhammer short coming through uh, later today as well. So um, other than that, man, comment down below. What do you guys think about this video, man? Um, what was this guy's name, bro? What was the, what was the channel? What was the channel? Oh, hold up. He put it somewhere. It was early in the video. Early video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, Cause I don't want to leave without shouting the guy. Oh, right here, right here, right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Put this together for me. I'm oh. Shout out to uh Pancrease No Work. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. I like your videos, bro. Other than that, man, make sure you check out the <laughs> Go check him out. Make sure you guys check me out as well. Make sure you guys like this, subscribe to the channel because I'm new. And uh just give it a out.